never got under my skin, and I was probably the only person who was never really bothered by you. Cochran seemed to start off crying just by you calling him out when he does his ponage Olympics and all that type of stuff. Oh, Mr. Lee Dorin. Please, 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 please. You know, I've got no problem with you. You can mention me all you want in your videos. I'm sure your audience is very unfamiliar with me. And I'm sure if, if you're trying to kiss TJ's ass, then probably making me look bad is a good way to go through it. You know, I've now got to do videos about how the world works. Why? Because you fall into the category of people I make videos about. You know? Dickheads. No, this isn't a debate. You know, it's not a debate. This is not me wanting to have an exchange or an interaction or to see if I can, you know, intellectually or politically or in terms of, you know, or discuss with you, you know, certain aspects of, uh, of the world that are, you know, because you know how the world works. You are how the world works, you know. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start off now by doing, by pointing out just something you said, quite frankly in a speech you gave to a hundred thousand people all of whom the the, 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 the the average age of whom was ninety to dead and uh, all of whom were standing there colostomy bags in hand as you sat there and delivered a sterling piece of bullshit rhetoric because bullshit rhetorically is not exactly something shocking for you to do but within that bullshit rhetorically was one of the dumbest things I have ever heard on YouTube, particularly from a YouTuber, particularly from someone who had clearly prepared this speech. You planned to say this, you wrote this down, you thought it, wrote it down, said it back to yourself, and it sounded great. It sounded like something that needed to be said. Oh, please, Lee Doran, tell me those things that the experts won't tell me, such as this beauty. The Constitution is not a thousand pages long, didn't need to be rammed home before a summer vacation, and our founding fathers, they actually read it. We done the Constitution and they actually read it. Oh my god, yes, oh my effing OMFG, how the hell do you to say these things that just quite frankly are groundbreaking? When I just thought the founding fathers were the people who wrote the constitution, who conceived it, came up with it, and laid it out. No, I didn't fucking even stop to think. It was likely that they had at any point having, you know, generally, so after they thought of it, decided what was going to be in it, and then written it down, they might have read it too. I mean, Jesus H. Fucking Christ, Lee. That is, that is amazing. I never, they actually, the Founding Fathers read the Constitution. I thought they just got random words out of a like, dictionary with a blindfold and a biro and just went, right, put that one in there. Oh, they just, maybe, they, maybe they just like scribbled words down and hoped language would come up and end up being viewed that way. Or maybe they could pick up bits of little letters out of a scrabble fucking box and throw them on the floor and then hope that the words that would form would tell them where they could go. But they never fucking bothered reading it. Why are you doing it on YouTube, man? You should be running the world. Well, think you, you do. This is how the world works. What I love even more is the fact that that audience of fucking thumbless, being 90-year-old throwbacks from the Dukes of Hazard. these people, most of whom were probably old enough to remember tapestry, muskets, the people who booed when you talked about the government trying to install hope and change. They booed that. Hope and change or such fucking back. Don't believe me? Look. And from taking away our liberty in the name of hope and change. Change I don't want. Change. Change. Uh, change. Of pro the only things I'm going to change are my socks, my underpants, and occasionally my colostomy bag. Hope is what you need when you change things, and we don't change things because things that change aren't good. We don't like evolving. That they cheered the point when you told them that the founding fathers read the Constitution. Uh, but you know what? I don't think they're cheering the statement, Lee. I think they're cheering the fact that somebody once read something. I think they're that impressed. Those people in front of you, Mr. Dorian, are so fucking stupid that they found the act of reading to be something of an achievement. When you when you talk, when you say things, do you know what happens? words come out of your mouth and when those words are formed in sentences and people hear them do you know what happens people like me get a hard on I won't get under your skin but I'll just 
I'll form some sort of rash on the surface of it. Go look at Lee, little Lee, go look at Lee, little Lee. If you were in a 1950s TV show, American TV show about high school life, possibly a musical, you would be the guy called Eugene with a bow tie who everyone threw pies at. I think that the, you have a great future in, uh, in something, uh, possibly an industry connected to catering. I don't know, mate. If your audience, mate, is impressed and is cheering the idea, the fact that you point out the Founding Fathers read the Constitution, even though they wrote it. You, because the amount of spastics and dim-witted, intellectually sub-par morons there are in this world, is an endless resource, darling. And you are an endless resource for me. This is Richard Dick Coughlin, 66, saying good night, mate, God be less, and fuck knows how the world works, but... But the inflation of globalization, fear is a weapon of mass destruction.